1990, the Gloucesters returned from yet another tour in Northern Ireland with the distinction of receiving more awards for gallantry than any other regiment in post-war Ulster. Back in England once more, they were stationed in Catholic, there to complete their tercentenary of loyal service to the Crown. It is in Catterick that this chapter of the story of the Gloucestershire Regiment comes to an end. The battle honours on their colours echo the nation's history and are a measure of the pride of the Gloucesters. At Alexandria, the men of the 28th were attacked on all sides, but calm as the Cotswolds fought back to back and won for themselves a unique distinction. Wolf fell at the head of the regiment at Quebec. At Festubert in 1918, their descendants, surrounded by four regiments, knew what was expected of the Gloucesters. Often they were chosen to form the rearguard on the roads to Corona, from Mons, before Dunkirk, and in Burma. On the Indian River in Korea, in 1951, surrounded on all sides, they fought and fell in four days and nights of unrelenting attack. Not for the first time, they saved an army. More recently, through the 1970s, the 1980s, and into the 1990s, a new generation of Gloucesters has upheld the good name of the regiment on the streets of Belfast and Londonderry, and in the fields and pastures of Armagh and Tyrone. Their story is underpinned by the indomitable spirit of the soldiers of the Gloucestershire Regiment, which has endured for 300 years. Their service, in good times and bad, created a sense of comradeship and pride which is typified by the words spoken by one colonel of the regiment on a parade when he was irritated by the strange titles used by other regiments. Neither the kings nor queens nor royal marines the 28th on Brad Brass before and brass behind never feared a foe of any kind Shoulder up